Okay, we're back here live in New York City for Silicon Angles, continuous coverage, exclusive coverage of Strata Plus Hadoop World. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is the ESPN of tech, as we like to say, big sports fans, we love talking tech. This is Strata, ground zero in New York City for big data, and this is where all the action is for big data week, and, and the industry is a buzz because it's the intersection of data geeks coders and business people all intersecting into one melting pot of innovation and disruption. I'm pleased to have uh, on, on the program right now guest Ben Werther, CEO and founder of a company called Platfora that just launched this week, uh, Stealth Startup. I got a chance to meet uh, Ben uh, earlier in the year. Got a little taste, and although he wouldn't show me the tech, he kept it on a complete QT on the wraps, uh, and got a briefing last week, and I saw you guys do the announcement. Ben, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thank you, John, good well, to be here. My co-host Dave Vellante is joining me as well, and uh, so I want to jump right in. I know you're super busy. I saw you getting hounded by the press. Uh, the, the rumor in the hallway is that you guys are the hottest startup here. I know you didn't win the uh, Startup Showcase Award. I don't think you were even entered. Uh, um, that, that's why I'm <laughs> <perhaps. laughs> Although Hadapt won, which is another good startup. We yeah. like those guys. Yeah. Um, they did a great job. But you guys are being talked about as the hottest startup here at Strata. Mainly because your marketing is so good, it's not that good. And the meaning is you're getting a lot of word of mouth mm -hmm. uh, yeah. recommendations. It's like you really kind of low key, but you're letting the product do the mm -hmm. talking. So one, I want to drill specifically into that first. But first set Absolutely. up for the folks what your company is, what sure. you're doing, why you're just so disruptive, and why the buzz is so high on Platfora. Absolutely. Well, you know, so th so we've been living living in this sort of big data world, dealing with all this data. Hadoop is obviously a hot topic here. Um, you know, w if you look back over the last couple of years, uh, you know, Hadoop adoption is exploding. But the uh, the challenge with it is, you know, every all these vendors are helping you set up a Hadoop cluster, get it up and running, uh, do all the plumbing, all this talk about the infrastructure. But when it comes to actually using it, if you want to let everyday users do useful things with all that data. Where do you begin? I mean, it's really, really hard, and this has been the uh, the missing piece. You know, companies have these pilots, and they they they, w they can store all this data that they were otherwise throwing away, and if only there was a way to go do useful things with it. And there's been a, a rash of vendors that have been announcing kind of connectors for Hadoop, but for the most part, that is something that doesn't really work. I mean, it, the challenge is you're sort of it's a whole different metaphor, it's a whole different architecture, and so just poking at it using a legacy product hasn't hasn't been at all successful. So we've been, we're the first company that's really taken this view of how do you go from the ground up and really build a new stack that's natively about business intelligence and exploratory BI and analysis for Hadoop for big data in a way that lets everyday business users visualize, explore, and most importantly, get out of the business of having to build data warehouses and data marts and spend six, 12 month cycle times. Um, you know, there's so many stories of these early customers we've been dealing with where until now, every new question meant a six, 12 month IT process. We want to get that out of the loop entirely. So, so one of the things we heard on theCUBE, in fact, the guest that was just on <laughs> before you is the CTO of Place IQ, and they're using a, a, a technology called Cognitio, which is an in-memory thing, but he basically just said, Hadoop solved this big batch problem, yeah. but BI, you need to slice and dice the data, and that's, that requires some schema, and then yeah. some benefits of relational database management systems, and you know, we were at IBM's IOD earlier in the week, and you know, relational database management systems are actually, are growing, uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, they may not be great for NoSQL, but it doesn't mean they're going away, so yeah. you seem to be doing this, so um, what is the big deal about that? Is How hard is it, sure. what problem are you solving? Is it the, you're doing unstructured data with Hadoop for the BI? Yeah. Because from what I understand, it's a schema challenge there. Yeah, right? I mean, it's a really good question, and I think that what we've seen as an industry is, you know, doing it the old way, doing it the relational database way, it's like building an organized filing cabinet. I've got to do this 6, 12, 18 months in advance, organize the data, but once it's in there, it's very efficient to access it. It's just, hey, if I need to change the question I need to ask, that's tough, I've got to go spend six months iterating. Now that's- oh, Hold on, hold on, say that again? If, if, if I, it, so a classic thing we've seen is, for example, you'll build a data warehouse with some data, you'll organize the data in a very careful way, and you'll roll it out to your users. And the users will start using it and they'll say, well, but hang on, I need to know more about, I see a pattern here, there's an interesting point where something broke, or uh, some interesting trend changed. An insight, they want to ask another they question. Want, they want to ask the next question down, there, what we call the next exploratory step. <laughs> and that next exploratory step. The next big step, question, as Claude Air would say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and the challenge is doing that often means redesigning your database. I mean, uh, often it's the data you need to answer that isn't even in that system. Right, we'll get back to you on that. Yeah, yeah, but and, then that and that's what, that, that pain point is what in terms of time frame? Uh, that's six plus months. Six months optimistically, 
12 to 18 months in a lot of cases really to get it solved. We had a soundbite on the cube earlier yesterday that said, imagine using Google once a day and then you could only use one query a day. Yeah. Or once a month, what would you ask Google? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're like, yeah. wait a minute, I, I ask Google uh, like a lot of things every day. Uh, so is that the kind of same kind well, of thing you're talking well about? Rapid kind of accelerating through uh, Q&A kind of? Yeah, I mean, I just I mean, drill this home really, really make it clear. So I, um, one of the, there was a retail custom company we talked to right at the beginning of this. And we said, well, hey, let's say a user says, hey, there's this thing about customers that I really want to know, but it wasn't brought through this into, into my, uh, into my uh, data, into my BI product all the way through the stack. How long does that take? And they started mapping out the series of steps. You think, okay, what, what could it be? A week, a few, you know, two weeks, six to nine months, three different outsource firms working together, monthly risk mitigation meetings, 10 to 15 engineers, all these phases of work to get it through to be in the BI product. So there's no question that that's why Hadoop is exciting people, but you're right, you need to bring back schema and structure. And you're seeing a lot of talk about that, those kind of trends here at the conference. Talk about your product. Now, yeah. you, I'm just at your website here, yeah. it says, making Hadoop amazing. Yeah. Um, describe your product for the sure, folks. Sure, sure, sure. So what we do that's different is, it's not enough just to point at Hadoop and hope it's going to be fast enough. You know, Hadoop is getting faster, but it's getting faster in the order of maybe hours go to tens of minutes. You know, it's not, if you have vol large volumes of data, it's not interactive speeds. We're all about giving users sub-second interactive exploratory BI, completely web-based BI. And so there's this impedance mismatch between Hadoop and the speed it runs and end users. And normally you'd fill that with a data warehouse, but that is that inflexibility point. We want to get rid of that. No more, no more data warehouse, the end of the data warehouse. Um, so what we have is a complete stack that goes from any existing Hadoop distribution all the way up to the uh, end user, three layers. At the front, it's a completely web-based exploratory BI product. Beautiful, fast, like super fast, hundreds of thousands of data points, selecting, interacting, exploring, t you know, works on the web, works on tablet and phones and so on. That, that's, it, it's different, it's cool, but that's not even the most interesting part. The real interesting part is that we create automatically aggregates and drive, uh, distill the Hadoop data into this scale out in memory layer uh, that spans one, 10, 100 machines, depending on what you, know, what you need, um, that so it's automatically driving Hadoop. You're not writing MapReduce jobs. You're not having to hire programmers and developers. You're literally letting end users say, hey, I want to work with this you know, video views data and I want to look at customers and devices. And it's going to drive Hadoop to automatically build that into this in-memory structure that's super fast, super interactive. And then they just start building visualizations from that. And because it's this two-layer approach where we're able to take the batch stuff and do it in kind of, you know, it's like the tracks lay in front of you and then you travel where you want to go rather than having to wait on each question, each step like you do today. So you use terms data refinery, which is cool because we actually coined the term data factories on theCUBE three years ago with yeah. Avi Mehta. Um, but it's a factory, right? So you yeah. got some data. Yeah. I like this in-memory lens. So talk about this fractal cache thing. Okay. So is that, what yeah. specifically is fractal cache yes. and this lensing concept? Absolutely, so, so a lens is like a, uh, it's like a data mart, a dimensional data mart. It's something that is, but it's not, it's not something that I ever had to go manually build. It's, ex it's automatically being generated out of the Hadoop data into this in-memory structure. And we, we talk about what we call fractal cache technology because that in-memory layer is also a, it's a complete distributed query engine, so it's driving the, the back end of this visualization environment. But the key thing is, so here's the, here's the perfect use case. I see something interesting in a visualization. I've got this set of, uh, maybe a scatter plot, and there's this, there's this weird anomaly, and I want to explore that deeper. And I go s literally select that in the UI. Today, in, a, in a most BI products, you know, they may say exploratory BI, but I click to drill down and it says, sorry, that's as deep as it goes because that's all we build into your database behind the scenes. In our model, without, without even leaving the visualization, you click a button, it says, I want to refine this further, and I say, here's the additional information I want, and I say, go, and it says, okay, working. And half an hour later, it's, you know, it's running in the behind the so scenes. So what happens with the schema? So what happens is, yes, so the fractal cache is this notion of the schema evolves to make to make room for that new data. Essentially, it's it's flexibly driven. Essentially, it's a reflection of the underlying Hadoop. Okay, data. so so the people are going to not believe it. So I I got I got to challenge you on this because yeah. so uh, is this working today? Absolutely. And, and you have we have, we have, 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 ten, you have ten, customers? Ten beta customers that are, that are and then we have a line of fifty to one hundred customers that we're just getting ready to basically uh, light up as soon as we have capacity. So there's there's a lot of interest. So. I got to ask you, is the traditional data warehouse a dinosaur? Is it dead? Well, my, uh, my keynote and my blog post were the end of the data warehouse, and so I think, I mean, look, yes in a sense. I think that there's always going to be a role for the data warehouse. The way we see this playing out in our early beta customers is the traditional, the canned reports, the things that don't change, you need to do the same thing every day, 
that's the traditional data warehouse. It's the traditional BI products, the you know business objects, microstrategy, and the rest. But you know, when you get to the world of explore exploration questions, where users want to come in and say, "Hey, I, I want to follow a hypothesis here, and let me see what I can discover, and then share out to the organization and discuss these insights and refine them." That whole world, the data warehouse, is the problem. It's the impediment, and if we get it out of the way, we can build this much more. So you build you're line. building BI from the ground up with Hadoop. I mean, we're replacing ETL data warehousing and BI into the stack that just sits on top of Hadoop and drives a seamless experience. Yeah, I mean, as, as you well know, I mean, the experience with the, the legacy data warehouse is just awful. Oh yeah. I've said many times, it's like a snake swallowing a basketball. People are chasing chips, they got one of everything, it's a patchwork, yeah. and It's slow as hell. It's, it's not really it's real time. It, it, well, right, not flexible. the elapsed time is, is, is untenable. Um, so, what do you tell CIOs that are obviously struggling with this sure, problem? Sure. I mean, <laughs> well, yes. should they be, I mean, they must, you must tell them they have to be more aggressive about investing in so the new stuff, but yeah. like oh, how do they go from where they are to so the So the it's, it's actually really, it's, 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 it's remarkably straightforward in a way, which is, uh, I think part of the part of the power of this and why we, why we have 50 to 100 customers, you know, we're basically waiting to, to use the product, is, so this, it's a two-step process. Step one, do you care about Hadoop? And so if a company isn't using Hadoop yet, you know, the, the, we, well, we give them time, but they, uh, if they understand that, they, that the idea that they're throwing away all their data, that they're not able, that they're living in yesterday's questions isn't enough, then they, then they want to start using Hadoop. They start investing in Hadoop. They start putting some data in there. Step two, they then try out all the existing solutions. They, they decide that they realize painfully that nothing works. And that's when literally we've had people, even with our stealth website, have been tra tracking us down, trying to get in the beta program because there's no other way to do this today. There are a lot of vendors with a lot of talk, but fundamentally, I you ask customers and none of it works, and we're able to give them an experience where literally we're going in with our software on a USB stick, installing it within two or three hours. Those I end users are doing sub-second interactive visualization, exploration. Uh, one of our early customers, big customer, I can't name them yet, but a really large customer, there's a woman in there who'd been using Hadoop for just a few weeks. She was a business analyst. She was completely, completely, you know, I mean, she's a really smart person, but didn't really know where to, where, to, where to proceed, what to do to really get any value out of Hadoop. Uh, we installed our software, we spent a you know, few hours getting her going. Come back three weeks later, she's now the expert on the team, she's training everybody, she's super productive. So the so ease of use is a, is a feature of yours? Oh, absolutely, and the rapid, rapid, rapid time to value, like literally a day. So two, two things that stick out, one, the time to query. So yeah. how fast can people recycle the uh, this through this lens thing. Sure. So what you're saying is that you could essentially get new questions answered without yeah. massive schema changes. Well, yeah, I mean mo most. I mean I think the vast majority of things people want to ask, there's a, there's a lens already there. So for them, it's just it's sub second. They literally boom, it's there. It's like that that fast. The uh, if they want to drill in in those in those cases where they really need to go further, then they want to have a lens refined built for them. That's just a point and click operation. It may take depending on the Hadoop cluster five minutes, half an hour, maybe an hour if there's a lot of data. But that's as long as it would have taken to query Hadoop in the first place. In, instead of just building one result, they've built up this entire interactive data mart that's going to support the next you know, day or two of work that they're going to So you're on. marketing, I was just looking at online, online yeah. here, it says uh, Hadoop with no ETL or data warehouse required. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's the bumper sticker. Yes, yes, yes. yes so yes. that's pretty scary. People like, I mean, you get any hate mail from data warehouse vendors uh, saying, hey, you're full of shit, you know, come on. Well, I got those my, my favorite uh, tweet by an, another a big vendor that I won't name who's actually a major sponsor here. Some folks were talking that about how That would be Informatica, folks. Uh, <laughs> no, it was okay. a different video <laughs> one. Of them, uh, <laughs> I said another one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was talking about they thought this was something from The Onion when they read my uh, blog post. They, uh, <laughs> it's too they, good you know, to like be true. This, is, this can't be right, you know. Like this <laughs> the this onion. idea of, you know, the, the, the world is changing. I think that we've seen a lot of people come by, you know, honestly taking photos of our booth, of the UI, because they understand something different is going on here, which is really cool. Yeah, I was talking to one of your employees at the at your um, your reception the other night, and he left a really cushy job at a big company because he said this is magical story, and you get a lot of good buzz. Congratulations! Can't Thank wait you. to see the product um, yes. and uh, get a demo. Uh, well, come so by so at our booth. You can come by and see it. That's yeah, so I want to I want to talk to customers. I mean, to me, my big thing is we were talking earlier. Customer validation ultimately trumps everything. Absolutely, I, yeah. absolutely. So I want to come back to that a little bit. Uh, ben, you made a statement about. Um, we, you know, if the guys aren't using Hadoop, that's not really our target. Uh, if they're happy, you know, uh, uh, living with yesterday's questions, that's yeah. cool. In your opinion, what percent of organizations uh, that are living with yesterday's questions are going to be out of business if they don't make a transition? Well, I, 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 I think that's th that's the magical thing here, which is, you know, you think about it's not about. I mean, cost of ownership is is one thing, and we. You know, we can argue all, all day long why this is a much, much, much more cost-effective and scalable way of doing things. But the thing 
yeah. just the thing that blows people away is there are business analysts we literally say to them well what questions can you ask and they and they can ask anything that wasn't baked in by to by an IT person three years before and they're living they're they're running their business off an off a set of questions that are obsolete and so the idea that they can literally sit down this afternoon and begin to answer questions or ask questions about the business in a new way that's I mean I don't think anybody's even been on a measure or begin to think about the implications of that for the for the business we um, we have been on this meme for a while now just I mean basically the last seven eight nine ten years have been about like you say TCO yeah. cutting costs doing more with less cutting IT budgets and so forth but we see the productivity impacts of big data and, and other technologies Absolutely. is really being enormous and, and yeah. many people in our community have forecast, look, IT spending is actually gonna, it's, it's gonna bottom and then sure. as a percent of revenues and, and if you're not spending more, you're gonna be left behind. Absolutely. Uh, in the right places, obviously. Absolutely, we did a great case study to your customer question, a great case study uh, presentation jointly with Capital One Labs uh, right here just a, few, just a couple hours ago and so we had a packed house People are really interested in, you know, how are we working with Capital One Labs as one example, doing some very interesting uh, analysis of, uh, in this case, it was about smartphone usage in terms of credit card purchase uh, purchase behavior, and they were understanding their app their app adoption, and they yeah. were able to very quickly reach some insights that were, you know, this is a very very first. We showed a Microsoft. Testing. We showed a Microsoft demo earlier, and my tweet was, you know, Hadoop needs to go get ready for the mere mortals. Mm -hmm. And normal people, like yeah, not <laughs> computer science majors, absolutely. Uh, where everyone can ask the question. So, so with that, what's the next milestones for you guys? Obviously, you launched the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to roll out and get the product out there, mm -hmm. and not do memory sticks, but go out and close oh, some big business. Uh, given the, the the progress, you're going to accelerate your staff, yeah. accelerate your sales. What's your strategy? Just hold on and hope you don't fall off the rocket. I oh, mean, I or mean, it's I mean, uh, I mean, really themed. I mean, one is we're we're in beta now. The product's looking amazing, but we've got to get to GA. So that's something we're targeting. I mean, we're on track for Q1 for that. Uh, we're building we're building out. We have relationships with all the major Hadoop distribution guys. A lot of the SIs. Everybody's very very excited. We're just trying to you know figure out uh, you know how we engage so that we can maximize and accelerate because. They're really excited. Their sales forces are actually trying to call us in and say, can we use Blood4 to help us sell Hadoop? I mean, it's a, it's a much better story if you can show why it's useful to people. Um, so there's that. I think, you know, we're obviously, we're, scale, we're hiring, we're hiring on the technology side, you know, engineers, uh, sales engineers, uh, sales people across the board. You've got Andreessen kind of Horowitz, which is your big VC, right? Andreessen so Mark Horowitz. Andreessen's firm and Ben Horowitz. Absolutely. Uh, any other, anyone else uh, in so there? Sutter Hill Ventures. Also, InQtel, which is in investment arm of the intelligence agency. Yeah, they can ask better questions uh, too. You know, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. it. And uh, and then some other a lot of a lot of other data collective, angels, uh, data collective as well, and uh, and that that team. So, um, you know, the Andreessen Horowitz group have been fantastic. How do you I feel mean, right now? I mean, you feel good. I mean, oh, I mean, it's been a fantastic show. I mean, just seeing the reaction, seeing the sense that people people get. I mean, we knew we were doing something different. We knew that there was going to be a good reaction, but I think that's unveiling it. Uh, just seeing the buzz, I mean, seeing that, you know, I, mean, I had a five-minute keynote right after Mike Olson. Mike did a great job, but we were we were being talked about as, you know, if not equal with, you know, Cloudera, like the, 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 the uh, in that, in that you know, either number one or two in terms of the most important stories of this event. So this has been a really great. Yeah, uh, I think so too. The buzz is fantastic. I mean, disruptive and innovative, but real. Absolutely. Practical, and you, mean, you really walk on the talk there. Absolutely, and people like people are at our booth playing with the product, seeing it in action. They're testing it right there, so it's not it's not you know it's causing it's a, a traffic product. jam and the three thousand people yeah, in that small little hallway. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ben Werther, congratulations! You're the hot startup here at uh, Strata Hadoop World. Congratulations! Uh, quick final question. Uh, Hadoop distro, any preference? Are you with Cloudera, we Hortonworks, so Republican, uh, Democrat, so we, uh, we, we, the, the <laughs> Green Party? The great thing about what we do is, you know, we make everybody, we, we help accelerate the entire ecosystem. So we uh, we work with Cloudera, Hortonworks, MapR, Amazon EMR. We're talking to the Greenplum guys about, you know, how, more, how we can do more with them. You know, we could we, we, we have a lot of friends at all you're those companies. Nice and Switzerland, and, uh, you're Switzerland in the big data world. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Okay, Ben, congratulations, startup. I know it's a lot of hard work to launch a company. Congratulations, it's great success, and uh, you deserve it. Looking forward to seeing those case studies. Yep. We'll be right back. This is Platform Hot Startup here inside the Cube. Always bring in the startup action. That's where the signal is right here. So look at Angle and Wikibomb. We'll be right back with our next guest.